I'm Dr. Melissa Wilson Sayers. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Life Sciences here at Arizona State University. My lab studies genetics, and something that's really fascinating to me is that while every cell in your body has the same DNA in it, it's the proteins that make each of your cell types different from each other. It's why your hair is not the same as your eye, as your nose. Proteins are long molecules that have a specific three-dimensional shape. And what proteins can do is, is a lot. They can detect signals, they can be signals, they can regulate your body temperature, they can help your cells recognize the nutrients that they need. But what's really critical is that they have to maintain that three-dimensional shape. It's a really specific structure. And if they experience conditions outside of their normal range, they'll denature or they'll fall apart. And so today, what are we gonna do? We're gonna break proteins. To break proteins, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna use heat, so you'll need some sort of heating element. You can use a stove and a pot, or you can use a microwave safe container and a microwave. We're gonna use a bowl for holding our proteins. Today, we're gonna use both a fork and a pair of scissors for dealing with our proteins. For looking at them, we're gonna have some heat safe containers. So we're using glass. Um, these are heat safe glasses so that we can actually see what's going on as we're breaking our proteins. You'll need some sort of measuring container. You can use a, a regular measuring cup. We'll use our graduated cylinder today. And we'll use both water and isopropyl alcohol. We also need our protein. So today we'll be using eggs. All right, let's get started. One of the things we want to do is have a control. So we're going to start with one condition where we don't add anything but our egg whites. So we're not going to add anything to this condition. For our second condition, we're going to add 75 milliliters or about a third of a cup of room temperature water. So we've measured this out. For our third condition, we're gonna measure out and add 75 milliliters or a third of a cup of isopropyl alcohol. And if you need to, take a break to wash your hands. One of the things you might wanna do when you're doing these experiments is to label your conditions so that you know exactly what they are. Because right now, my water looks remarkably like my isopropyl alcohol, and I don't want to be confused later when I come back to it. Now that we have our conditions labeled, we're going to wait until we add our hot water because we want it to stay hot, and we're going to get our proteins ready. Today, we're going to use just the whites of the eggs because that's where the albumin, the protein that we're interested in breaking, um, exists largely in the egg. So we're gonna use two eggs and we're gonna cut the egg white in half using our scissors. I like cooking and, and using eggs a lot, so I'm gonna separate the eggs just using the egg shell, but if you like, you can use an egg separator to take the yolk out or you can grab a spoon. The proteins of the egg white are connected in here and so the first thing we need to do since we have four conditions is to actually snip it so that we can have four sections of the egg whites to work with. You can snip a little bit. It doesn't have to be just four sections, just so you have some chunks so that we'll get a little bit of egg white into each of these and ideally about the same amount of egg white into each of our conditions. So there are four different conditions that we'll add our egg white to. We have our control that we'll leave plain just egg whites. We have our tap water that we'll add our egg whites to. We have our isopropyl alcohol and we're gonna warm up our water and add it to our hot water condition so that we can add our egg whites to all four conditions at the exact same time. So let's go warm up some water. So we are very carefully gonna be adding our just finished boiling water. And now everything's ready, so as, as quickly but as carefully as possible, we're gonna add a quarter of our egg whites to each of these conditions. So our first condition will be our hot water. Our second condition, our alcohol. Our third is our tap water and our control. So one of the things you can do is just let your proteins sit in the different conditions, or if you'd like to see what happens, you can stir them up. So let's stir our hot water. And we'll stir our alcohol. That right there is denatured proteins. So we have our four different conditions now, and let's think about what's going on in them. So in our control, we've not added anything to our egg whites. And that means that the albumin or the proteins are still tightly wound, bound up in their specific three-dimensional structure. What happens, however, when they get denatured is that three-dimensional structure falls apart. We've broken our proteins and they take up more space 
and they actually become this kind of quite milky, long strand of protein. We've denatured proteins different ways today, but proteins get denatured every single day. They get denatured in your, in your kitchen, they get denatured in your stomach, and it's important to realize that it's not a protein just because it's an egg. So we're not thinking about things that we typically call proteins in everyday life. It's every kind of cell needs proteins needs proteins in that three-dimensional shape to survive. So your broccoli has proteins, your carrots have proteins in them, and when you cook them, you're affecting the shape of the protein. That's why it changes texture, it's why it changes color. So while you're going through your day, if you're eating your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, your fourth meal, whatever it is you're having, think about the ways that the proteins have been denatured or the ways they will be denatured. Thank you for breaking things with me today and I hope you get a chance to break things at home soon.